So this new research paper just dropped titled The Effect of ChatGPT on Students' Learning Performance, Learning Perception, and Higher Order Thinking, Insights from a Meta-Analysis. So I thought this paper was super interesting. As it says in the title, it's a meta-analysis, meaning the authors didn't just run a single study. They reviewed all the major papers on how ChatGPT affects student learning, from the ones that say it barely helps to the ones that say it makes a huge difference. They analyzed the full range, identified the patterns, and laid out some big picture conclusions. The research was conducted by two Chinese scholars from Hangzhou Normal University and was published in Humanities and Social Sciences Communications, a peer-reviewed journal by Nature. So this is easily one of the most comprehensive and up-to-date reports we've got on the topic. And on that note, let's jump right in. Alright, so first of all, let's take a look at what exactly they're aiming to measure. They have two high-level questions here. How effective is ChatGPT in promoting student learning performance, learning perception, and higher order thinking? And then, they also look at some of the factors at play, or study characteristics as they call them, like grade level, type of course, learning model, duration, the role played by ChatGPT, and so on. By the way, they analyzed the results across 51 experimental studies in total that were published between November 2022 and February 2025. So again, this is a very up-to-date and large-scale study. Let's see what they found. So overall effectiveness. The overall effects of ChatGPT on enhancing learning performance, improving learning perception, and promoting higher order thinking were calculated as G equals 0.867, G equals 0.456, and G equals 0.457 respectively, indicating that ChatGPT has a large positive effect on learning performance and a medium positive effect on learning perception and higher order thinking. Now, don't pay too much attention to the numbers. It's just a way for them to measure it quantifiably. But essentially, the larger the number, the more positive the effect. And 0.867 represents a large positive effect, whereas 0.4-ish represents a more moderate effect. There's also a table here that displays the results, but it's really just not the most visually appealing table. Now, you might be wondering, what does this actually mean? Like, what does a positive effect on learning performance really mean, or learning perception? Well, let's dive a little bit deeper into that. So, how would ChatGPT positively affect a student's learning performance? They mention here that ChatGPT may genuinely enhance learning performance by enabling personalized learning experiences, providing immediate access to information and diverse perspectives, and allowing students to engage more deeply with the material. Studies have also shown that students who incorporated ChatGPT into their studies tended to acquire additional knowledge, thereby improving their understanding of complex concepts and enhancing their learning performance. Now, interestingly, the courses focused on skills and competencies development is where they observed the biggest positive impact of ChatGPT on enhancing learning performance. They note that this may be because such courses typically involve well-defined task objectives and procedural steps, which would definitely make sense. Another interesting thing they note is that ChatGPT has the most significant impact on learning performance when the duration of the learning experience is in the range of 4 to 8 weeks. When it's longer than 8 weeks, they actually notice a slight decline in learning performance due to students becoming overly reliant on the technology and neglecting to reinforce what they already know. So this is the part that I found particularly surprising, because we usually assume that the longer you use a tool like ChatGPT, the more helpful it becomes. I mean, not only do you become better and more efficient at using it, but the model also gives you more relevant responses over time, as it stores your past conversations in its memory. But in this case, it's kind of the opposite. Beyond a certain point, they find that it can actually backfire, due to an over-reliance on the technology. Now, how effective is ChatGPT in improving learning perception? Basically, how did students feel about learning with ChatGPT? Well, ChatGPT could of course make learning more interesting, but they found that it has only a moderately positive impact on learning perception. They note that this may be because, although ChatGPT can quickly provide knowledge, answer questions, and generate content to enhance students' academic performance, it lacks emotional intelligence 
limiting its ability to provide the kind of humanized interaction needed to establish emotional resonance with students or spark deeper learning interest. So perhaps there's still a missing human element to the learning process that ChatGPT may not be able to replicate, at least for now. Now, finally, how effective is ChatGPT in fostering higher order thinking? This involves critical thinking, problem solving, analysis, and the ability to apply knowledge in new situations. They notice the largest positive impact here in STEM and related courses, where students are often required to collaborate with ChatGPT to complete complex projects. And the process of completing such projects inherently promotes the development of higher order thinking skills, such as creative thinking, problem solving, and critical thinking. And in terms of roles that ChatGPT can play, they mention that its function as an intelligent tutor has a particularly strong impact on the development of students' higher order thinking. When acting as an intelligent tutor, ChatGPT provides students with personalized guidance, feedback, and assessment. All right, so let's do a quick recap. They found that ChatGPT has a large positive impact on student learning performance, especially when it's used for about four to eight weeks. It's most effective in skills-based courses with clear goals and structured tasks. It can make the learning experience more engaging, personalized, and efficient, but it still lacks the human touch that emotional connection and nuance that teachers bring to the table. And finally, it's most powerful when used as an intelligent tutor, providing students with real-time feedback, personalized support, and helping them build deeper understanding rather than just giving them the answers. So it's very clear that AI definitely can enhance learning. Will it replace human teachers and tutors entirely? No, most likely not. But what it does have the potential to do is democratize high-level personalized learning at a scale we've never seen before. Now, here's Saul Khan, the creator of Khan Academy, giving his two cents on the impact of AI on education and where he sees all this heading. I wanted to include this clip because he looks at it from more of a business perspective. And according to him, schools may actually be one of the first places we see mainstream adoption of AI. Check this out. I think generally speaking, this is one of the cases where schools might be one of the first places where you see mainstream of, uh, adoption of AI for productivity and, and learning and, and just, you know, doing the day-to-day -day work, which is really trying to help kids learn. Um, as you already mentioned, teachers have already leaned into this because so much of what teachers do can be streamlined with AI, um, especially on the planning side of things and the grading side of things. And as the models get better and can support students better and get more proactive, I think everyone sees it. And yes, there is compute cost, et cetera, but it's dramatically cheaper than anything else that's come before. After the pandemic, there was $86 billion that was spent on ESSER, these, these funds to help kids remediate. And that, you know, that's like 2000 something dollars per American student. And a lot of districts plowed it into fairly expensive paid tutoring like live tutoring, and there are some exceptions, but for the most part, there's not much to be shown for it. Um, you know, so instead of something that was costing $25, $50 an hour, you're now looking at something that costs $10, $15 a year, um, and, and you get much more dosage if you want to. So, yes, I, I, I think I, I'm actually seeing more in, in school districts than I'm seeing as a leader of Khan Academy. And, you know, I, I've been pushing the Khan Academy team. I was like, you know, when, when are we going to be able to get, you know, automate some of our bookkeeping or when can we do this on this or when can we do, you know, I'm constantly pushing the engineers on how much more productive are you getting uh, with the coding? I heard that company X is, you know, hundred percent. Why can't we be a hundred percent? But um, yeah, I think schools are schools. Uh, there's, there's school districts we've talked about with, they are, they're saying it's saving their teachers at least five hours a week, if not more. Um, they're using it as a recruiting tool, retention tool. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this. I know the majority of you probably aren't students, but of course, we are all still learning. I mean, AI can help you learn anything you want. It doesn't have to be school or work related. Think about the future implications of this. Imagine every student having their own personalized AI tutor 
for every single subject and available at any moment. This could completely transform the education system, especially in lesser served areas that simply don't have the resources. I personally agree with Ethan Mullick that figuring out how to effectively employ LLMs at scale in education is one of the most important research problems of our day. But let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.